And it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we have the usual suspects in quarantine. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Doing all right. Glad to be Good to here. see you. Good to see you. You still seem sane. We have the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, are we safer? No. Okay. I'm feeling well rested though about it. That's good. It's good to see you. you uh, we've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? We're doing great. It's great to be here. Great to see you all. It's a nice little coffee concoction that Laura made you. Yes, just uh, yep, yep. It's very, good. it's very good. Very nice. <laughs> I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, looking well rested. Tate, how are you doing? I'm good. Trying to keep my sanity a little bit. It's, uh, you know, for all those people out there complaining that, about being quarantined without young little children in your house, stop it. Just please stop. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the second season of Lots needs to incorporate the the, the kitties and how you block out time um, with that. You know, that is a common question we get, though. Like, how do you run a business and be kind of home all the time? That might be a good topic. Yeah, absolutely. And last but not least, the brain, the professor, the flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd, scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist, your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek, learn anything about anything, investor ninjas.com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. But the only problem is, is that the quarantine land geek team doesn't really look like the unquarantine land geek team. It still looks the same. We're all in the <laughs> same exact spot. Yeah, I think we should, I think that's what we're going to talk about on this podcast is how we're all staying sane during quarantine. But before we, before we get into that topic, I do want to just remind the listeners, today's podcast is sponsored by Flight School. Learn how 16 weeks can literally transform your life because once you start going up that mountain of, of passive income with Scott Tobb as your Sherpa, quickly, safely, efficiently, it can be transformative. Learn more. See if this is right for you. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. So, Scott, as you alluded to, the beautiful thing about our business is that from day one, we've always been virtual in every aspect of the business. We physically don't even go look at properties. We don't physically meet with customers. It is a 100% virtual business. So not only that, but it's asset-based. So we are not even exposed in, in any way to the turbulence of the stock market. Um, it, that's not affecting us. Any type of uh, distribution chains, like you know, manufacturing in China, we're not affected. Um, basically, what we've learned through all this is that we're in a really great business model. I'd love to hear the counter argument to that. Does anybody have anything they would say, well, it's great, but it would be better if Eric devil's advocate on this. I don't know what could make it better. I don't know. I mean, I, I feel pretty, pretty blessed to be in, in the situation I'm in, you know, I, I think that, um, I mean, especially in the, the current, situation. I mean, just like you said, I mean, it really hasn't changed the way we work at all. And uh, a lot of people can't say that. Yeah. I mean, Mike Zeno, any, any counter argument to this? No, I mean, you know, Mark, I always talk about being grateful and, uh, and just how grateful I am to have this bit, I guess, exponentially. So at this time, right. It's just, it's a, it's it's incredible. You know, we always talk about, like you said, uh, who you want, with who you want, where you want, and when you want. Well, this is where you want, like totally with a magnifying glass on it. I mean, this is, you know, we are working from our home. You know, and you know, cognizant of the fact there's people out there that are losing jobs, and it just makes me so grateful. It really does. Uh, 
sales are still coming in. I mean, uh, um, arguably more leads than before. I think that our land, all of us, our model, uh, we're not infill lots, right? We're people that own land that's away from cities, a few hours away from major cities and all that, you know, that whole, all that you learn in Scott Todd, with Scott Todd in flight school. But uh, that, if you look at like a heat map where all this is going on, it's not near our properties and this is where people want to be. So it's just amazing. And, and on the purchase side, you know, not that we're out there trying to take advantage, but there are people that are looking for cash. I'm getting ready to make some big bulk purchases that are really, really good right uh, so in all aspects it's it's incredible i feel so grateful uh, to be you know associated with all of you guys and to be have this opportunity uh, I, I can't have a counter argument you know all i can say is man am i grateful yeah yeah i mean mimi what, what are your thoughts completely agree it's ops as usual here i'm just i spend i'm spending a lot of time cooking right so that's the challenge right it's now that I have all these extra duties, it's just getting over that. But otherwise, everything's really good. I'm very grateful. You know, I hear about all the unemployment, all my neighbors that are filing unemployment, that are white collar executives even. Um, it's just shocking. Yeah, we're, we're really, we're really blessed. Um, Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, uh, counting my blessings like everybody else every single day, but uh you know, it, it is kind of business as usual for us. Not much has changed. Um, in fact, you know, my wife, we were talking to a really good friend and they were like, so how's this affected you guys? And she's like, uh, she just can't go out right now. I mean, that's, that's kind of the main thing. And like everybody else already mentioned, we're, we're really uh, proud of what we have and proud of what we've built. And the cool thing is we're not alone out there, right? There's a lot of other land geek members and, People, I, I got an email from somebody actually in the UK yesterday and they were saying that uh, lost their job and their sole form of income is now their passive income from their land notes and it's going to get them through this hard time. And it's pretty cool to know that uh, we're able to teach somebody how to bring in a secondary form of income in their life that will help them weather the storm. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, this is this is really that that perfect umbrella for that rainy day that inevitably comes. That's why you, you pay the price to start a business that provides you passive income for times like this, whether it's some type of pandemic, a natural disaster, um, your company uh, goes through adoption. There's so many things in life. I mean, it really makes you appreciate just how we're all sort of, you know, skating on thin ice and and we're so vulnerable and there's so much out of our control. So the things that we can control, it, it's, it really just makes you appreciate that. I mean, I, I like to say Scott Todd is that pig that built his house full of bricks because you, you literally did it, right? Yeah, you know, Mark, it's, it's funny because um, th there's a couple of thoughts that I have going through this whole, de uh, whole mess, right? Like one, one is, uh, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, right? Like you could always look back and say, hey, man, I should have done this a long time ago. And you can't worry about that. But, but the, the second best time to plant a tree is today. So, you know, whether you're just getting going or you haven't built up the passive income enough, use the spare time to get it going, right? Like this whole thing, this whole pandemic thing, it really does show, it shows me the um, kind of the cracks in the system. And what I mean by that is look around at all of the stuff that we thought was like recession proof. Okay. Like I'll give you some examples. I mean, this, this is just what's going through my, my brain uh, during this whole thing. Like a buddy of mine owns um, a number of great clips, I'm sorry, sports clips franchises. And, you know, for a while I was looking at investing in a sports clip franchise because it's recession proof. And I'm like, man, I, it's going to produce money in the recession, whether, I mean, people still need haircuts, right? Well, I went to the sports clip franchise the other day. Guess what? They're closed, non-essential services, okay, because they're in your face. Wow, I would have never saw, saw that one coming. Uh, let's see, while I've had my shiny object syndrome out over the last few years, um, you, I mean, you and I have talked to guests on, on the podcast about, you know, uh, FBA uh, fulfillment by Amazon. Let's go start an Amazon business. We can make millions. Well, that's cool, except go try to buy something on Amazon right now that's not essential 
go try to buy something electronical or a cable, which I love to buy. You can't buy them. It's, it's 30 days or more out. You can't go buy this stuff. So imagine if my entire business was built on Amazon's platform. Business. How about Airbnb? I mean, Airbnb, a lot of people love that Airbnb model. That. Yeah. I mean, That's we've tough, looked at that. Yeah. Imagine you've got, well, I think we, you and I both know a guy, he's probably got like 50 to 70 Airbnb units. Okay. Like, man, that's a lot of money to, to pay out when it's not coming in, right? Like when the good times are coming, it's great. But guess what? In a pandemic, which none of us could have anticipated, he shut down. He's out of business. I don't know how he's paying the bills. Okay. He's hoping, I think, that the landlords will let him go. I mean, ATM investing, what, what happens when your bar or restaurant shut down? Like, help, let me get my money, please. I need it. It's in there. You got to cash out. So you got all these businesses and then what survives like look around what are what are people doing you know we've talked about that that land the land like you know eric mentioned the land that we were buying or maybe Zena said the land that we're buying is more remote it's not in the cities people want they want that remoteness now they want that isolation we've got the commodity for them and i gotta tell you i'm not seeing a reduction um a reduction in in um Kind of traffic and at the same time we're offering something that people can afford that's the secret yeah it'd be interesting to just go around and get an update eric and i did a, a facebook live yesterday we we're talking about um is now a good time to get in the land business and you know it was unequivocally absolutely but um eric just starting with you have you seen any any uh chinks in the armor so to speak in your your land business no, not outside of what we talked about yesterday. And that was that <clears throat> I think since Friday last week, I, I had two of my customers contact me and ask if it was possible to, to skip the next month's payment. And um, my response was basically that uh, they couldn't skip that payment, but instead I'd be willing to give, her, give a reduction of the payment by up to 50% for the next month and then we can reassess after that and and continue to move forward so my goal is to um you know help out people if i understand their story and uh and think it's valid um i'm more than willing to help them out um but i still want to collect some money because that's how i pay my bills um yeah. so so yeah i mean that's that's really the only thing i've seen and and out of all of my notes i mean that's a very small percentage um so far that have reached out yeah, how about you, Mimi? What are you seeing out there? Well, my purchases of land have slowed down a little bit because of the older folks that are not going out to get the documents notarized, right? Um, so that's interesting, trying to help them find options that are low risk for them. That's about okay. it. Otherwise, everything that's, else is the same. Yeah, people are still making their payments. Yeah. Still, everyone's still making their payments. I haven't had one person default, knock on wood, now that I've said that. <laughs> Otherwise, it's all good. Yeah, how about you, Zen Master? No, no reduction in sales, acquisition still moving forward. You know, this, this, this kind of, when we were talking, let, let me uh, kind of consider the value of our community as well some more because as I told people before, like nobody really that's not involved in land investing wants to hear you took a hundred dollars and turned it into 300 or 400 or a thousand to 4,000. Just people who, you know, they're going to look at you and be like, like you're bragging, like, you know, so that's where the community is valuable now, especially, you know, more than ever right now, <laughs> nobody wants to hear that we're making sales. And so this community is a way that we can come together in this difficult time and still motivate each other and still celebrate our wins and, 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 and really highlight our niche and how great it is. But, uh, no, because we've had no change. We've had sales. We're buying property. Uh, there's no, there's no, no real change. So I'm glad that I have you guys in the community to talk about that with. Because who else am I going to tell? They don't want to hear it, for sure. Yeah, I mean, comparison is the thief of happiness, and now we are that vehicle to provide all this unhappiness for all our friends that are, you know, not in this niche. Yeah. I mean, I, I just talked to my buddy in Chicago and he's got to work from home and he's got two young kids and, um, you know, he's not used to working from home. He's like, I don't know how you do it. He's like, how are you productive? And I'm like, I, I don't know. You know, I, I didn't know what to tell him. I'm like, you just gotta, you know, let, 
to have some good boundaries and find a, an area where you're going to be uninterrupted and, um, you know, just make the best of it, you know, have a schedule like you would at work. Like don't just constantly take coffee breaks and, you know, snack on whatever crap they snack on Chicago. I feel like there's a cheese curd joke here for the, but Bossman's not on the, on the round table today. Um, but uh, Tate, any, anything that you've been seeing? No, honestly, it's, uh, it's business as usual. Um, I wish I had something more exciting to report, but I guess that's why I'm in this line of work, right? I want things to be as boring, predictable, and dull as possible because that's why I can outsource them. So the fact that I've got nothing exciting to share is a good thing in my book. Yeah, I mean, that also, I think, makes sense why you are a cyclist. <laughs> <laughs> boring right just like riding your bike going you know around and around and around yeah i guess it's fitting at least he goes yeah. somewhere he doesn't just stay yeah. in one spot i was gonna say the only <laughs> thing worse than that is staring at an ipad for 50 minutes the, o- the only reason i i made the cycling joke is the the condescending look that tate gave last week when we were talking <laughs> about the peloton he's still <laughs> sitting with me Cuts like that's, a knife, doesn't it, Mark? It cuts it, like it a knife. does cut. It it does cut like a knife. So, there you go. How you like I'm that? How you like that little paper cut back at you? Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. I mean, it's a little. It's a little bit of a low blow. I mean, especially since we weren't at that part of the podcast yet. But uh, I know the gloves are off now. I'm prepared <laughs> for the rest of the call. I'm glad. I'm glad. Well, to hopefully uh, support me, Scott Todd. How are things uh, looking at, for at your business right now? I think Scott's took off. Scott, you there? <laughs> He's on mute. You know what? He, he probably is like, you know what? If they're going to start talking about cycling, I'm leaving. I will say because there's so many more things I have to do around the house now because we're all here. So I have to cook more. I have to clean more, right? I'm having to push more things on my VAs, right? I'm pushing them to do more things because I just don't have the time. So that's a good thing, right? Because the more they learn and the more they take over, then the less I have to do. It, 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 you know, it, it's, it is true. In, in a way, I think that is an advantage. I actually just had a call because I was doing those quick 15-minute calls with people from the community. They just wanted to talk. And um, I had a client take me up on it. And of all things, he's blind. And he's working the business blind. Wow. And he's like, well, for due diligence, I can't see the map. So I said, you know, this is an inherent advantage you have. You are forced to outsource a lot of this business where other people, you know, they're kicking and screaming to make this a business. They want to make it a job. I'm like, you know, to me, you have this sort of inherent advantage. And he's like, why? You're the first person to ever, you know, tell me it's not so bad to be blind. I'm like, you know. That's an awesome story. We should have him on here someday. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. No, he, and he's, he's doing it. So, um, I mean, you know, he knows how to do this obviously, but, um, as far as like, you know, the accessibility features on, on the computer, but that piece, the visual piece of it, he's forced to outsource. So Scott, you, you had mentioned, you'd taken off while we were, um, making fun of cycling, but I wanted to ask how, how things are going with your business. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, for the for the most part, I mean, it's still it's still uh, moving along. We haven't really had anybody that says that they want um, that they want to um, kind of default on the property. Uh, we did have one person that they had just bought the property. I told the story before, but they had just bought the property, and uh, like three weeks beforehand, and their first payments up, and they both lost their jobs, and so they asked for uh, deference, and so you know. I can either do that or I can refund them the money. So I figured I would give them the deference, but basically just as Eric mentioned, you know, like I don't want to do, um, if at all possible, if someone needs a, a pay reduction, we can reduce payments and work on a modified plan. But essentially, you know, we, we all have to keep moving forward and, you know, I'm sure that other things will change, but, um, you know, ho- hopefully it works out for people. And I think that the most important thing is that, 
one of the things that we offer to our customers is that we're not a bank, right? Like that's one of the things that we can probably say as well. We're not a bank, you're working with the owner. So I think as long as we all make good decisions for our customers and for our businesses, I think we'll come out the other side uh, stronger and we'll build, build even more solid relationships just by doing the right thing as opposed to doing the corporate thing, right? You know, like let's, let's not be the corporate bureaucracy. Let's, let's show our value to, to the world, which is we provide something that nobody else is doing, which is owner finance land. Yeah, no, it, it's so true. So I thought as a, as another sort of round table discussion, we could just kind of talk about how we're each staying sane in quarantine. I mean, I've got three teenagers doing online schooling and, um, and having to, you know, that's an adjustment. Scott, I know you're, both your kids are at home, right? Two teenagers. Yeah, they are. Yeah, Mike, how about you? What's going on with your family? Um, we have, uh, yeah, my, my, my daughter, my son, and, and uh, but they're not in school, but uh, my youngest daughter, she, she's doing homeschooling. So, um, yeah, it's a little bit of a shift, but I, I think to stay sane, you know, Laura and I are doing uh, some, you know, get outside, get some fresh air type walks and also doing um, uh, yoga on, you know, the TV type exercises. And actually, for everybody out there, Mark, you and I, we love him. Wim Hof's courses are 50% off. He's stepping up because of the uh, situation. And so I just bought, I know you've been through, I bought one of his newer courses with the yoga. So we're starting that this afternoon and I'm very excited. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, Mimi, are both your kids at home? Yes, I'm actually enjoying it. So, so what, I mean, you're, you're doing extra stuff though. So how are you staying sane during this? Well, cooking, baking, right? Cooking rolls, making three day pasta sauce, homemade meatballs, all kinds of good mm. stuff. Big breakfast. So I'm having a lot of, a lot of fun doing that, but, um, running, exercising <laughs> to combat the other, the eating side. Um, yeah. And that helps me get out, right. If I go on run a little bit. So that's helped me stay sane. But, um, I think just taking some time to, by myself every day to kind of focus is helping too. Cause it gets, when we're all together all the time, we start to rub each other's nerves. Right. So I think it's important to get some time by yourself to kind of center yourself every day. Nice. Eric, how about you? How are you staying sane? You got two, you got two, well, you got one teenager, right? Yeah. One teenager and one, about a year away from that, but uh, yeah. yeah, so they're home. They're, uh, they're doing online school right now. Um, their teachers are sending their lessons and they're sending them videos and they're doing Zoom calls and, and all this stuff. So now, you know, it, last night Ezra was saying, well, I can't do that tomorrow. I have, I have a Zoom call at 10. And it was just so funny to, to hear him say that because I mean, it sounds like something I would say, right? Well, I've got a, right. I've got a Zoom call at this time, but um, yeah, so we're all home. Uh, when the weather's nice, we're trying to get out uh, for walks or take family bike rides, um, play games, you know, just do different stuff, um, trying to get out of the house when we can, um, but trying to be safe at the same time. So, yeah. Fantastic. How about you, Tate? You know, uh, I got young kids. Uh, my kids are very much dependent on us, so we are still very much in the entertaining phase. Um, so, I mean, we're home, we're staying safe. We go on a lot of walks. We do a lot of crafts. We're cooking and baking like Mimi is. And, you know, I'm still riding my bike quite a bit um, to kind of just break things up. But, I mean, I complain a little bit, but the reality is we kind of are used to this a little bit when you have these really young kids in the house. It's not like we go out late anyways. You know, we're not out going to restaurants at 7 30 7 o'clock hit and it's like it's bedtime i don't care what movie's playing it's not worth being out for so we're pretty much kind of used to it at this point and uh we just miss our friends and my wife would tell you she misses target so other than that it's just <laughs> normal <laughs> yeah yeah scott todd how are you staying sane uh, you know, look, here's the deal is that I don't really have, um, um, uh, the things that I do, I don't really go out anyway. I don't, you know, I'm not going out 
clubs, bars, whatever, you know, the things that we do do like one of the things that we, my wife and I enjoy doing is going out for lunch every day. And, you know, with that, we've had to now resort to pick up. So we're picking up and then we're eating in the car. Right. So it's like little things like that. We'll, we, we try to keep our normal order routine going, uh, but just obviously doing things a little bit differently. And then, you know, basically, you know, you know I, I'm still going to the hangar. Uh, I live in Florida. So guess what? The boat ramps are still open. So that's a win. Uh, there is new social distancing for boats, believe it or not. You got to be 50 feet away from other boats. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Police are out there on the water making sure you're more than 50 feet away. And by the way, when you if you go dock at a island, a sandbar, whatever, you, you know, I think that's really where the 50 feet comes in is you got to be 50 feet away from it if you're docked. Um, and you know, just, just like, we're not, we're not hanging out with a bunch of people anyway. We hang out with our family anyway. And well, the other thing that we've done is just separated, you know, like, uh, literally not seeing older, older family members, keeping, uh, access to them very limited. And beyond that, you know, when I, when I absolutely feel like I got to get away, I head to the man cave. What can you say? Yeah. I mean, I, I think we can all agree you've, you've lost complaining privileges. So <laughs> I'm not trying to complain here. I'm just, uh, you know. Like, no, you know, I, I know you're not. But if, if in the future you ever did, <laughs> yeah. you would just yeah. tune you out. I mean, basically. you know, like I do. I feel bad because, like, I was gonna. I thought about taking the boat out on the weekend, and then my wife were like, oh, I don't know, you know, so let's let it let it wait a little bit longer. And um, and then I was, I see this guy, he's like a, he's like a billionaire. He posted this picture that he's uh, in self-quarantining in like the Caribbean I on saw his that. half a billion dollar yacht or whatever. And the guy's just getting creamed. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I just won't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, for me, not much has really changed. I'm still keeping my routines, uh, exercising, meditating, um, making my wife crazy. Um, those are all things that I enjoy doing. Um, you know, you, I'll tell you what, what was sad was the boys were like, Hey, let's go throw the football around, uh, in the backyard. And it came to a point where like, it hurt my like arm to throw the ball. And it was like hurting the like, catch, like it's like one of those harder footballs. It's like hurting to catch the football. I'm like, guys, can I just watch? Like I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. And I think they made a crack about your no Tate and why don't you just jump on the Peloton and <laughs> something about, we wish, we wish you were young like Tate. Cause he, he would definitely play with us. Um, my daughter's doing a lot of TikToks. She's doing, so it's the most adorable thing. She's doing her dance class via zoom. So she dances in a room with her class via zoom when the instructor's in the dance studio. And then um, to keep the resentment meter as low as possible with uh, my wife, I'm doing a lot of cooking. So, you know, that, you know, she's just taking a break from it and I'm going on and um, you know, if, if those of you are, you're, you know, not used to cooking, I, I watched that Netflix show, salt, acid, fire, uh, salt, acid, fat, heat. Okay. It's like, I can make anything taste good if I just do these four things. So, you know, surprisingly, they like my cooking now. So it's been pretty good. Win-win. It's been a win-win. So I'm, I'm staying relatively sane, calling a lot of friends, family, talking to clients as much as possible. Um, if, I ever, if I'm ever bored, I'll just call Matt Forbes. That's gonna, <laughs> that's, I'm not joking. It's fun. It's fun. So fun. Him and Anne Marie are, are unbelievably fun. And um and so I, I feel like we should all go around. I know what Tate's tip is gonna be. Like your our tip of the week of of like our Netflix show that we're currently binging. So Tate, we'll start with you. All right. It's uh this might not surprise anybody, but if you haven't checked out Tiger King, it is terribly unusual and strange and highly addictive and just I, I'm speechless for it. So please watch it and uh, let us know if you think Carol did it or not. That's what we need to know. <laughs> All right, Eric. Um, 
Let's see. I'm probably behind, but I just finished uh, Jack Ryan season two mm. on Amazon. You're so, way behind. I don't. I don't that, even know if we can give that as a tip. Honestly, that, that's right. a good tip. That's me, Mimi awesome. was talking about that like six months ago. What can I say? <laughs> Sorry, I'll give another tip. Something more current. I, I think. He, I think that's Eric just kind of flexed on us, Mark. In a sense, he's like, "Yeah, I don't even watch TV." Basically, that's what he just said to us. That's not. Yeah. True. You, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's like an SNL skit. Oh, TV. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've been reading, yeah, and listen and listening to Bach and Mozart while I sip my wine. So it's good. I, I, I have a feeling like this is like a jot not pro moment. <laughs> uh, Mimi Schmidt, how about you? What's what's the the, the Schmidt the show? I've been watching the English game. It's about how soccer developed it, or football developed in England. And it was created by Julian Fellows who created Downton Abbey. Um, I really enjoyed it. That's right? kind of an intellectual little show to watch as opposed to Tiger cool. King. It had like Downton Abbey pomp and circumstance mixed with the whole athletic soccer thing. Like all, Athletes and what they used to wear a hundred years ago, 140 years ago is super interesting. That's awesome. I get the sense you and Eric could start like your own sort of intellectual club and just, you know, the two of you could be like, well, these guys are one category, but we're sort of more <laughs> cultured, shall we say? <laughs> I think it's a good. Th I'm not. I'm not making fun of it. I'm. I'm probably saying because I'm so culturally inferior. I feel uncomfortable. Okay. So, the main character. He's yeah. really handsome. So like my my um, <laughs> professionalism and sophistication. Oh, he's really good looking. Try it out, ladies. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Zen master. How about you? What's your your tip? Well. I can't believe it got to me and no one's mentioned the obvious. So I'm going to let that go to the end. I know the ob there's one obvious one. but So I'm going to go with just a movie that uh, I just watched. Because you can rent them on the TV. Obviously, you can't go to the theaters, right? So uh, I, um, The Way Back with um, uh, Ben Affleck, that's a great, great movie. I just watched it last night. So if anybody has – he's a basketball coach. Uh, it's kind of it's – kinda, it's, it's different. But, it's you know, the kids at first were like, what? And they loved it. It's – so I'm gonna I'm not gonna go with the obvious TV show that everybody's on the tip of the tongue, but uh, the Way Back, uh, Ben Affleck movie. You can rent it right, in, and it's cheaper than going to the movies with all your kids because it's just one tiny buy. So that's a good one. There you go. And you know, while we're on that that uh, point of high culture, you know, Mike, come on, you you're in that group too. You're all you're always reading some intellectual book. What's what are you reading right now? I, you know, I've been I've been taking a break from the reading. I've been I've been really uh, listening to a lot of podcasts and whatnot. But um, you know, I, I did recently start listening to Ray Dalio again because you can basically play that on a loop forever and ever, and you won't even know when it starts over again because like principle six hundred nine point five. <laughs> you know, it's like just keeps going and going. So uh, Ray Dalio principles. This is a great time to dig into that and and uh, just kind of think about your business and whatnot. But I've been doing a lot of podcasts. I, I love Joe Rogan's podcast. In fact, if you want something that's fun, listen to when he interviews Jake the Snake. Anybody who used to watch wrestling back in the day, uh, it is probably there's there's one moment when anyway, watch that one. Uh, he, he's got some great guests on there too. Some people that talk about what's currently going on right now. He's got some astrophysicists. So that's a that's a great thing as well. The, the Joe Rogan podcast. Very cool. Scott Todd, how about you? Okay, I would, um, let's see, this one's a little bit outside, and I don't normally watch, like, The Bachelor or anything like that, but uh, sure. <laughs> Love, Love is Blind, <laughs> I think is what it's called on Netflix. Love is Blind. And even oh, my wife man. is not a fan of those shows either. She's not a fan of them either. Guess what? She's like, I'm like, we got to watch this. This looks like a train wreck waiting to happen. Oh, so, yeah. We watched it, and she's just like, wow, I can't believe that I actually uh, found that show interesting. So, What's it called again? I think it's called Love is Blind on, on um, Netflix. Let me look. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 
my daughter's Love watching it. Yep, that's it. They're like in the cubes or whatever. And they, yeah, you know, yeah, stuff. yeah. It's interesting. It's it's definitely interesting. All right, very good, very good. My my tip. I've I'm only on episode five, but if you're if you got Netflix, I'm loving Ozark. Loving, awesome. loving Ozark right now. Um, but that is our staying sane quarantine tips of the week. But let's go into business mode and let's pick on the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt, for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something else actionable for our passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What have you got? So I've got a link to the National Notary Association. They have a bulletin on coronavirus. And because, um, you know, I noted that um, my purchases are a little slower because older people are not able to get to the bank. So it talks about here what, the, what they're suggesting. A notary still has to take your ID and hold it. The notary still has to exchange the paperwork from you. Like I thought, well, what if I drive up to the bank and I use the, um, the drive-through for my notarization, because they all know me anyway. No, the, the notary association says that they have to see you, they have to hold your ID, they have to swap the paperwork with you. They are suggesting this window notarization, window separated signings. But you have to call your bank or wherever you usually go to get things notarized and ask if they can even accommodate a window separated signing. Like mine doesn't. I can go from 9.30 to 1.30 and it's just like a normal notarization. I'm exposing myself to a coronavirus, right? Um, so call where you usually get your notarization done and see what kind of accommodations they have and take a look at what the rules are. Um, but it is what it is right now. All right. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. Um, well, I want to just thank you guys for, for jumping on and, and uh, providing value for the round table. Hopefully everyone's enjoying the round table podcasts. If you are the, the, the greatest compliment we can get is if you do three little things, you got to subscribe, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the latest wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money in 30 Days or Less. I also just want to give a shout out to the, uh, the flight school students that are enrolling tonight because fortune favors the bold. And Mike and I were talking about this before, when there's so much uncertainty with the economy and all the bad news, people go into three responses freeze, fight, or flight. And we've seen, you know, people are freezing. Like they, they just, they can't make any kind of decision right now with anything in their lives. Um, they're just kind of waiting. And then you see the people that uh, are in the flight mode. They're, they're just, um, they're, they're, they're like, you know, hoarding things and, and, um, and doing sort of, you know, crazy things they normally wouldn't do. But then you get the fighters. And they're seeing, okay, now is the time for me to, you know, make lemonade uh, out of these lemons. And those are the people that are enrolled in flight school during this time. And just, I want to congratulate all of you for taking that, making that bold move um, in the face of uncertainty, even though intellectually we all know this too shall pass. But when you're living through it, you're watching the news, it doesn't feel like that. And so congratulations um, to those of you um, joining tonight. And um, that being said, I just uh, want to, again, thank everybody. And uh, are we ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. And... Wash your hands. <laughs> Guys didn't know I was gonna do that. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get haze for that one. Mark, you yeah. know, I now know how our guests feel on the podcast when we just break out with let freedom ring. It's shocking. Like I like I'm speechless. But good job, Mark. Thank you.
I did oh, look away. Look. It felt a little better. I looked away that time. It felt a little bit more coordinated. So yeah, yeah, it's all yeah. good. Yeah, Mike, are calls down right now at the fire department for you? No. No, but I haven't been there, Mark, because I was on um, when I had traveled. I was I was uh, out of the country, so I had to self quarantine for uh, fourteen days. So that'll be over April seventh. But um, they are trying to, you know, reduce in any way possible, uh, you know, you know, exposure, you know, from us to other people, because you know, as you know, some people can be uh, can have the virus and not be symptomatic. So uh, it, it, it's it's definitely a difficult time that the one that they're uh, that they're uh, trying to mitigate as best as possible. But uh, I'll be back in full swing next week. All right. Fantastic. That's, that's good to know. I know I, I was talking to Paul Brewer and he yeah. said he, they were like, their calls are down like 17% because, yeah. you know, well, people I are going was, out, they're going to reduce reason. the, uh, they're going to reduce the, uh, you know, the accidents are going to, you know, car accidents, all these type of things. I, you know, I guess it would, it would make sense. They would slow down because no one's really going anywhere or they shouldn't be anyway. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, stay safe out there. Be well. And um, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks guys.